Don't you hate it when your ancestor has a name that lots of people have in common with him or her? There isn't a name for what I'm about to teach you. And as my friend Amy Johnson Crow says, this is just good research. So let me introduce you to the same name rule out methodology that I'm going to use in my brick wall busting series. So in the same name rule out method, what you're trying to do is to definitively rule out and exclude people who could not possibly be your ancestor. They, they just can't. They're not of the right age. They're not at the right place. They are connected to entirely different people through established documentation. They cannot be your ancestor. And after you've done this research, you filter down all of the possibilities that it existed in you know, the United States, let's say. <laughs> it, it'll be really hard to search the whole world, but you could try. You could try, I'm sure. You're going to use reasonable uh, parameters to find all of the possibilities and start excluding them so you're left for either a handful of possibilities or just one. So let's dive into what I am setting as my parameters. To find the most likely son of Effingham Townley, who died in 1828 in Elizabethtown, New Jersey, and named John as one of his heirs, I need to be looking for Johns in 1830 and 1840, and hopefully in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. However, the West had started opening up, people are starting to migrate to Ohio and other location, so I need to be open to the possibility that John, the son of Effingham, has moved to another location. Now, in order to establish a birth year, I need to go and look at Richard Townley, who I have definitively proven as the son of Effingham, and I know his birth date, as well as Caleb, who is another son, that was named on that will, and I have definitively proven that he is the son of Effingham Townley. And I need to piece together when they were born and utilize their birth dates to help me try to figure out when for John. So in the will of 1828, Effingham's children are listed in the following order. Richard, Abby, John, Jane, and Caleb. The will also stated that there is a William who is deceased. So I'm not entirely sure where William falls into this birth order, but often in wills and probates records, the order of the names suggest birth order. So I want to go one step further and not rely on the suggested. I want to go and find some dates to put it but to it. I have discovered that Richard's birth year is likely 1794 based on information in his death register entry. There weren't any other documents from 1794 for Richard, son of Effingham and Rhoda. The birth year of William was found on his uh, gravestone. It was inferred on his gravestone. He died in 1827 before that 1828 will, and then the year is 1796. So he's two years younger than Richard, so Richard William. Now, I do have a little bit of difficulty with Abby and Jane. Right now, all they have is information that was put into Family Search pre-2012, because the source is Family Search 2012. Well, that's from their, their migration from their other systems into this one. And we don't really know who provided that information. It could have been an extraction project. It could have been um, family group sheets. I'm not sure what it's based on. I'm not entirely ready to dive into the lives of Abby and Jane until I can establish that John is their brother. But if I, through all my research, I still can't figure out how John is related to this family or not, then I might have to come back and research Abby and Jane more fully. But at the time of the, creating this video, the family search tree suggests that their birthdays are 1798 and 1802. 
Finally, I do have a piece of evidence that John was born in 1805 and 1806, and that he is the youngest of these children. So given the timeline that you see on the screen, the most likely place, the largest gap for an age is between Addie and Jane from 1798 to 1802, and then maybe squeezed in between Jane and Caleb. But for the most part, I'm thinking he's going to be between Addie and Jane. I'm going to run that with that theory until I need to switch later. So if John's birth years falls between 1798 and 1802, that puts Effingham Townley's son John in the age range of the 1830 census like this. A white male between 20 and 29 or a white male between 30 and 39. Now here's the kicker. If he was actually born between Jane and Caleb, then I'm only going to be looking at the 20 to 29 range. So I really am searching both at the same time. Now we start doing the same name rule out theory. I went over to Ancestry.com because I do like when you type in the name into your search field, they do a wild card search for you without you using wild cards. They do a very, very broad search of names. So I came up with a list of about 20, 25 names. So you can see those in my show notes There's, if you want to be able to see them more clearly than what you can see on this screen. After I put the family structures together, I went in and I highlighted green for the ones between 20 and 29 and yellow for the ones 30 to 39. I'm leaning towards him being more in the 20 to 29 range, so I'm going to investigate them. And if I can't find a solution, then I'm going to go investigate 30 to 39. For 20 to 29, there are three results. John Townley of Elizabethtown, New Jersey. That's exciting. Because I've already decided that that is, is likely John Townley from Cincinnati, Ohio. But I need to be careful. Then there is a John Trunley of Madison, Illinois. And then John Tinley or A. Tinley, depending on how you read the record. And he's over in New York City. Now, the New York City seems to be a likely possibility because New York is not that far away from Elizabethtown, New Jersey. Elizabeth is just across the river or waterway from Staten Island. So New York is still in the running. However, what's really cool about the 1830 census is there is a column that asked if the individuals were foreigners and not naturalized. And this column is marked. So it takes them off the list right away. Now, initially when I did my same name rule out method, I discounted Madison, Illinois' John, because his family structure didn't align with the 1840 John Townley in Cincinnati. In other words, I was trying to prove the relationship between John of Cincinnati to John in 1830 rather than who could be the son of Effingham Townley and then could that likely son match the John in Cincinnati. So be careful which way you're running your thought process and which assumptions you're working on under to ensure that you are actually doing the research you think you're doing. And if you make a mistake, like I did when I was putting this video together, just stop, start over, and run it again. So right now I have two men in the 20 to 29 range. I have John from Elizabethtown, New Jersey, and then I have a John from Madison, Illinois. But let me go ahead and explore the Johns in the 30 to 39 range and go ahead and rule them out as well. Now, the first two entries are John M. Tanley of Union, Essex County, New Jersey, and Jonathan Tanley of Union, Essex County, New Jersey. So I looked at John M. Townley and Jonathan Townley of Union, Essex County, New Jersey, and there is documented evidence that they are related to Jonathan and Phoebe Townley as their parents. So if Jonathan is their father, then Effingham is not. So we went ahead and took them off the list. There is a Jonathan of the 11th Ward in New York City, and he, John Nathan is close enough 
that he could be near Elizabethtown, New Jersey, where his father lived. That is not a huge migration. When I looked for him in 1840, I couldn't definitively conclude where he is. So although he is at the uh, right age to be Jonathan's son, I have nothing that helps me identify who he is and who he isn't. So right now it's inconclusive whether he is the John who is Effingham's son. Next, we move on to John Finley, who is in Huntington, Ohio. When I did a little uh, digging into him, I discovered that he was from Ireland and the son of James Finlay. So this is a case where, yes, the name could have been confused with Townley, depending on how it got search, uh, recorded and indexed, but he's from a different surname and he's from a different location, so he can't be the son of El Effingham of Elizabeth. So I moved on to another Finley, and based on that first Finley, I highly doubt that this is actually going to flip to a Townley, and I was right. This um, man from Blount County, Tennessee, is the son of John Finley and Margaret Kerr of Tennessee as well, so he cannot be Effingham's son. I went through in my research notes that are over connected to the show notes of the blog, and I filtered everybody down until I basically have two possibilities. If you want to see all of the um, reasons why I exclude the people on the list, then be sure to go check out the link in the description to the show notes. So now I have two possibilities. I have this John in New York City 11th Ward, and I have a John in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. So the next thing I'm going to do in my same name rule out theory is not just rely on one record set. So now I'm going to turn to a record set that in this time period has a lot of relationship evidence. And those are land records, which I talked about in a previous video. So I searched for all of the Johns in the land records until the time of about 1860. And in the land records, I found five, <laughs> sorry to count on screen, I have five instances of Johns. Now, a lot of time these Johns are connected to a wife, which is why I love land records, especially when a record uh, land is being sold because the wife's name is included. So we have John M. of Union, John and Phoebe of Union, John and Rebecca of Springfield, Jonathan and Rhoda of Union, and then John of Nowhere, who is the son of Effingham Townley. I'd like to call your attention to a couple of things that I learned about these Johns. First, I have a son of Jonathan and Phoebe. So the age range was close, but the parents are not correct. Then I have a 1766. Well, that completely takes them out of the running because John was born somewhere in the late 1790s to the early 1800s. And then the next one has the same problem, born seven, about 1766. 1792, that works for the time range, a little older than I want him to be. Maybe he was the oldest but his parents are already established. And that just leaves one John possibility in land records. Now, when you're doing a same name rule out research project, you might have to actually keep diving in other records, tax records, probate records. You might actually have to look at newspapers, church records, and keep going. For me, I think I was able to quickly rule it down to the final two and then make a final decision. There are two men, John in Elizabethtown, New Jersey, and John in New York City. So let's apply Occam's razor to this for now. And Occam's razor simply said, the simplest explanation is likely the most accurate. And in genealogy, you can't always use Occam's razor, but it's better to go with the simplest until you have evidence that disproves that theory. So my current theory is this, that the gentleman named John Townley, who was in Elizabethtown, New Jersey in 1830, is living there two years after the death of his father. While he could have moved to other locations 
in the 1830 and 1840s census, it just doesn't line up. Now, John is old enough to be the head of household on the 1830 and 1840s census records. So we do need to leave the possibility that he is actually hiding under somebody else's name. However, in this census record, we have a John Chanley in the right place who hasn't been connected to any other ancestors. Could he be the son of Effingham? Most likely because there's no other John in this location according to these records. Now, John could be really impoverished and not have records made about him. So what then? Well, that is when you have to leave likely in place. I'm going to conclude this. And feel free in the comments to tell me what you would have done or differently or if you think this is a good theory. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I put, pieced all my conclusions together into a research report. If you need to get caught up on the brick wall busting series, check out this playlist right here. And if you're ready for the latest video from Family History Fanatics, check out this one right here. Oh my gosh, I constantly keep saying Effingham Town, New Jersey. Effingham Town, New Jersey. Oh my gosh, Elizabeth Town and Effingham.